a lot going on this week. How y'all doing? Boy, y'all working me to death, okay? Ever since I came back from vacation, y'all ain't stopped. My phone ain't stopped ringing. I'm getting cussed out right now in text message by Tokyo Tony as we speak in real time, okay? I'll read the text messages here a little later, okay? Now, we got three shows. Y'all gonna see me look down because, you know, Jasmine is working remote, so she's kind of controlling the board. I gotta watch it from my end as well, too. So it's a different dynamic, okay, when we living out of hotel rooms and shit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just gonna have to get used to it. But nevertheless, the wine don't change. It don't change at all, okay? The location may change, but the wine never changes, okay? Now, full show for y'all. Three shows, okay? So we got this show. We're gonna give y'all the breakdown of what had happened yesterday on social media. Uh, Tokyo Tony was accused of some heinous things against her daughter. Now, I thought it was gonna be a good Mother's Day this year for her, but obviously not. Her and Carlissa are going... Pound for pound, town for town, okay? We need them in the UFC ring for world's worst mother, all right? And we'll talk to Tokyo Tony a little later because, as I said, she is texting me in real time right now, all types of paperwork, lawyers and stuff. I don't know, okay? We'll, we'll, we'll discuss it all, okay? You know, everything's on the table here, everything, all right? Definitely going to be talking about Kim and Croy. Going to be discussing who we got a, a lot of people up here, Dr. Heavenly. Who else? Peter Thomas, okay, was arrested in my good state. Angela Bassett, ESPN and the Emmys, Holly Baby and this new baby, okay, Sexy Red. Who else? Uh, oh, man, uh, uh, Fulton County uh, District Attorney, Miss Fanny Willis. Yeah, Miss Fanny around here. Yeah, giving folks jobs. <laughs> when black women gonna learn? When they gonna learn? Okay, she done came for Trump and Trump's whole camp. It's coming for her, okay? And so we're going to discuss that. Um, also going to be discussing uh, TJ and Amy Robot. okay? They've been uh, drinking a lot here lately. You know, I, I maybe it's my show to blame. I don't know. We'll discuss that later. And last but not least, a lot, a lot more, okay? I got a lot of topics here. And then, we, of course, we got the second part of the show on TashaKLive.com, the uncensored part. We got Kirk and Rashida on TashaKLive.com. Make sure you get them subscriptions. We also got, um, hold on, let me, let me let me make sure I get it. I ain't got my little reading glasses here. Uh, definitely going to be uh, discussing Young Miami uh, dropping Diddy uh, from her show, okay? I don't understand how you fire your boss, okay, or your trick. Uh, that's new. Uh, definitely going to be talking about Miss Netta and Charles. Uh, Charles apparently popped up with a white girl and a baby, okay? We're going to be discussing that on TashaKLive.com. Andy Cohen, okay? He said somebody hacked his account. I think I know who did it. We're definitely going to discuss that on TashaKLive.com. Steve Harvey uh, addresses Cat Williams. Well, he said he didn't, but he really did. We're definitely going to discuss that. Aerie Spears is coming for Cat Williams. You know, I got something to say about that. Larsa Pippen out here lying again. Larsa lies. Okay, that's the name of her podcast. It should be the name of her podcast. Again, Dwight Howard got full custody of a child, and I don't understand how, how, how is that so. Uh, we're definitely going to be discussing that in his history. And uh, Travis Barker, his wife, his ex-wife is coming for him. His neck, mm-hmm. She's trying to put him back on the plane. Yeah, all that and more. And we got a full interview uh, from Twin Hector, Black China's ex-boyfriend. You know they always come talk to me. Anytime they break up with Black China, the first stop is unwind with Tasha K. And can you blame them? And can you, yeah, can you blame them? I, I would I would stop here too, you know? We had some wine. Matter of fact, shout out to his mama because his mama sent them down to the studio. She showed did. She said, you go on down there because I'm a long time wine on and you tell Tasha K what happened. And y'all wouldn't believe what the mama did to uh, uh, Black China, allegedly. Now, if Tokyo is in text cussing me out right now, you need to say them words for uh, Hector's mama and what she allegedly did to your daughter. And you still ain't got your lick back on that, but you're too busy trying to come for me. But nevertheless, we'll talk about it. Before we get started, we're going to run our little trailer over here, and then we're going to go ahead and get uh, uh, the wine popping because there's a lot of fuckery going on, okay? Go ahead, Jasmine. Let's go. The fucking Memphis. Yes, yes. In, in the, the wine zone. Memphis hits, baby. H I T Z. All the way in South Florida. Yes. And just like I was telling you, you don't do no interviews. I really don't do interviews. And I, I kind of stay out the way. Short. Yeah, yeah. I stay out the way. I'm like, you know, I don't. I I've never been in the one that want to be bickering with my with my exes and stuff like that. But people let be telling me like, yo, it's Memphis. Necessary. I think you're the only man that's yeah. famous yeah. with your exes. 
That's crazy. I'm supposed, yeah. to be, I'm supposed to be famous for some other stuff. No, you're famous because of who you dated. That's crazy. I'm supposed to be famous because I discovered T-Pain. I'm supposed to be famous because... Well, I, I, Go signed, ahead. I signed some artists. What that, artists? Uh, K. Michelle. Uh, K. Michelle. Okay. Jay Quan. Okay. Everybody club get tipsy. Yeah. Huey. Pop lock and drop it. My my label hits committee. My show on BT. The deal. When I used okay. to be a, a host of VJ. Okay. And, and I'm doing all this stuff. And this is what people be You're asking me about. Famous for when I Google your name, you know what comes up? K. Michelle. And but they did put alleged. They put alleged beater. That's crazy. The ma- music. They'll say K. Michelle accused her former boyfriend and music executive Memphis of domestic abuse. Okay. Did she fall in love with you? Yes, she's still in love with me. When we was in court, when I was doing the lawsuit, she was still looking like you wanna. She was still acting like she wanted to go do something. I was like, oh, but girl, you crazy. You, you ruined my whole life. You crazy? I would never touch you. And that's when, and that's when, that's when shit really got ugly. I ain't gonna, you know, just, I mean, I just like, I can't take it no more. I'm done. When I said I'm done and I was, and we was, we was in the hotel, I said, I'm done. And I got about, I got, I got real close to that door because uh-huh. I was out of the door. But my head, that, that much, if that, my head, that was that close from getting hit by that iron. I called the police. So how long were you guys together? Maybe, what? She be making it like it was years. We probably was together like five, six months before I just said, I can't do this no more. All right, so welcome back. All right, make sure y'all check out that interview. If you checked out that interview and you thoroughly enjoyed it, hit the wine glass. It was a lot here on wine there, okay? Like three bottles of wine uh, to start with, okay? Y'all be blaming me, and I ain't got nothing to do with that there. These folks is grown, and they give me consent. They're over 21 to pour them a glass. So I don't understand how I'm getting blamed for anything. Neither here nor there. Let's go on and get this wine started, okay? I know we're starting quite early. Who's first? Hallie. Oh, she's so pretty. Thank you so much. It's super hot. I need some hot water for my throat. I got to use it later. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm still thanking him for the hot water for my throat here. I'm excited to use it later. Anyway, uh, congratulations. You finally came out and told the truth. You had us out here dragging your sister. Your sister was even out here catching catching strays. Mm-hmm. So was that pissy tail. That's little boy that you done had a baby with that had the decency to let in and then had a decency to ask you to be his wife. The little mermaid. I mean, damn. Um, I, I just, I, here's what I don't understand. You know, if, if it's something that you truly want to do, not, not granted, it's none of our business as to what you do in your relationship, but unfortunately you married a clout chaser for a living, okay? He makes his living off of exposing his life, whether he stages it or whether it's real, okay? And you happen to be a part of that stage, a matter of fact, on that stage. Now, granted, he does make decent money. You know, I know the YouTube checks around. You don't let him lie to you. Don't let him fool you. Um, And of course, he's making money here and there, rapping and stuff. But you you are the long-term bag. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you got, you got to think of the long goals. And, and Hallie is the lone goal. That's why she got the longest voice between her and her sister. Um, and so I, I just don't understand. What's wrong? What's wrong with my shirt? Well, y'all gonna let me host the show? Y'all interrupting me in the middle of commentary? Because you worried about a titty that's always out. What's wrong with it, Jasmine? What's wrong with it? I'm good. Okay. Sorry, y'all. We got more important things to talk about than my titties. Okay. Mm. They have a mind of their own. They mind their own business. Now, back to what I said, I just don't understand why uh, you needed to lie about having a baby. Only for you to come out after everybody from your team was threatening media about lying and putting out false reports only of you holding a baby's hand. Now I'm trying to figure out, are you, are you happy for the, I'm happy for the baby. I'm, I'm happy that that's you, your uterus, your child support that you're going to be paying for your own baby, Callie, cause you the bag. And, um, 
You know, I just don't understand why you need to lie. I just wouldn't lie on my baby like that. My baby's here. My baby is here. I just, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Now I can get, I get it if you didn't want to, uh, you know, announce because you know, a lot of people don't announce until the second or third trimester and stuff like that. But for, for to have social media up in arms, to pull a Kylie Jenner only to come out here. I don't know. I don't know. It's giving Kylie Jenner. It really is. But congratulations, um, you know, to her and the baby and to the baby daddy and, uh, welcome to the baby mama club. Bottoms up. All right. Moving on. Who's next? Speaking of baby mama club. Now this one here, um, here's what I'm going to say. I don't think everything that sexy red does is accurate. I, I don't, I don't think she is her brand. And the more I watch her, you know, steal songs allegedly, because you know that song, F my baby daddy, F my baby daddy. I heard that on YouTube. The girl got in my inbox and was like, you know, she took my song. And I'm I'm like, I'm sure it was a producer or something. And they just kind of rolled the beat. You know, she got a bigger audience. You know, you got to protect your stuff out here. You know, shout out to the young lady that did make the song. And shout out to Sexy Red for profiting off of it. Okay. Now. Mm. And that's how you know she's really Hollywood. And I knew that when the uh, the tape got uploaded to her Instagram and she said she didn't do it. Same thing happened with Kim Kardashian, Paris Hilton. And as soon as that tape, that funky, smelly, pissy, musty, dry, skin on skin tape got uploaded, I was just disgusted and I could smell her ass through the phone. Y'all sent me that tape because I sure wasn't looking for it. I knew when I saw her down there posing with Kim Kardashian and them gals, them fast ass gals, that she had did what she needed to do to cross over, which was go through some type of public humiliation. If the world sees your ass, they either going to love it or they're going to hate it. Because like I said, you know, energy surrounding sex is the strongest energy ever. And now she has our kids locked in loaded. Like that long, that, that short skinny uh, uh, pain that she had. You know. mm -hmm. And so when I see these maternity photos and she's singing songs to my, my baby daddy, this girl, like, you know who she reminds me of? Luke in the nude. Look, look, is it not? Is it looking to know what is it? Lou Skywalker, look at these photos. She glowing, baby daddy rubbing her feet. Does this look like the type of lady that really, really truly believes in like disrespecting her baby daddy? Does she, she strike you as that type? She strikes me as the type to do whatever the record labels need her to do for her check. Even if it means humiliating herself and and leading a, a, a trail of young women into oblivion. She cashing her checks at the end of the day. She remind me of Luke. Is, is it Luke Skywalker? The one that, that uh, ride, ride with me, ride, ride with me. Yeah, yeah, that's who she remind me of because his wife was a lawyer. Everything that he rapped about, that's why he the only one ain't caught no, no cases out here. Have you noticed that? He ain't caught no cases because he married a lawyer. He made sure that his brand was very different from his home life. And when he had his reality show, we saw a lot of that behind the scenes. She's giving me that too. She is. And the only reason she's not marrying him now is because it's going to kill her brand. But she got two kids by the same dude. Mark my word. And everybody keep listening to her. Go ahead. Go ahead. Breaking up the black family, the young black family. Go ahead. Keep 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 emasculating the black man. But she praising hers right here. Show Liz. Right before everybody. But I love it. Moving on. Oh, there's been a there's been a it's a shame and a tragedy here. So um ESPN has been caught. Allegedly, I ain't even got my reading glass, so I shouldn't even be reading right now. This age thing is really real. Now, ESPN has been caught allegedly buying fake awards from the Emmys. 
Now, you know, every talk show host, every on-air host looks forward to being invited to being invited to the Emmys, getting an Emmy, or even getting a nomination, or just simply getting the invite. They ain't invite me. I don't know why. As hard as I work over here, I work harder than any other talk show host out here. Damn. Anyway, maybe I got to buy mine, but I ain't got it right now. I'll get them on the back end. Now, apparently, um, you know, after, especially after, um, you know, there's, there's been a lot of speculation behind these Grammy, Grammys and, you know, Oscars. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But to hear that ESPN has been, let me, let me, let me pull it up now. Because I don't want to, you know, put no words because, you know, they, they hear, they, they trying to protect their brand because everybody's telling on everybody. Now, according to the New York Post. ESPN operated a 13-year Emmy scheme using fake names to get awards for top talent. I don't even think I need to read the article, but I'll read just a little bit of it, okay? Now, the award for the most craven statue stealing goes to ESPN. So that means for the last 13 years, everybody that has possibly gotten an award bought it. They saying that by streams too. They saying that by Grammys. Now the network allegedly made up fake names for Emmy awards in order to obtain statuettes for on-air talent who were ineligible to receive awards. Which means they, they didn't even qualify. So they found a way around. They, they, they went through the back door. Now, only for the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, which oversees the Emmys, to foil the scheme, according to The Athletic. Okay? Now, ESPN had operated the scheme since 2010 by submitting the names of fake individuals, which means they would submit fake individuals, and if somebody from their team got chosen, it was going to be that specific person. Now, with the same initials as their stars under the guise of associate producers, regraving the statuettes and then delivering them to their on-air personalities per report. Now, this scheme helped secure hardware for the on-air talent behind the success of College Game Day. Now, the hosts were not eligible to be honored for the Best Show Award until 2023. Because there are separate categories for individual awards. Now, this leads me into Angela Bassett. I just love this setup. Beautiful. Gorgeous woman. I don't even know what Tina Turner looked like no more. I don't. I don't. She was a passport sis first before me. Yeah. Mm hmm And... You know, when the Oscar was taken from her, because they don't tell him what, what went on behind the scenes. And they say they got certain people that sit on the board of the Oscars that vote. And, you know, who won the Oscar uh, last year that took it from her, uh, apparently didn't even deserve it. I know she came at, and, and they had told her that she was going to be taking this award home only for her to be um, disappointed. And so here's where things get a little sticky for me. A little oiled up. Is that if if someone truly doesn't deserve an award, according to the institution that is giving the award and according to their criteria, then they shouldn't simply get an award. Now I'm old school. I don't believe in participation awards. I used to I used to get those a lot, and it was so humiliating. Like I just participated. That's all I get. I, I mean, I got an A too, but she got an A, but her A was a couple points high. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't get that. You either you, you the best or you need to work at being the best. Now we all know in our culture what Angela Bass's career is worth. We know what it what it what it brought in. We know the impact it has had on our lives. I was just talking to my mama about this uh yesterday in a in a in a you know a prominent public figure. And I was saying, like these women, like Angela Bassett, or even let's talk about RB stars, you know. Uh, uh let's just say Tony Braxton, Kelly Price, people like that, you know, they help to shape our childhoods and our adulthoods and our young womanhoods into being who we are. Their music played a role in, in, in the decisions and stuff that we made and our love that we have for other people. And these are the type of roles that 
Angela Bassett and Taraji P and all them play. And so when I hear that they want to give out participation awards because they're under fire, because um, there are people investigating and finding out that there are certain ways in order to buy an award or to bypass um, uh, meeting the criteria to get an award, it makes you think. Would you want a participation award or would you want the award that you actually deserve? Because to me, giving her an a, a, a honorary Oscar, that's telling me, guess what? I don't qualify for no other Oscar. So we're going to give you just the Oscar, just like an honorary degree. You didn't do it just for doing the work. We just, you know, we want to be attached to your name. We don't want. You know, black folks not attending our Oscars because we know what Will and Jada did to us for years. You remember what Will and Jada did when they was boycotting the Oscars and everything? They didn't want that. So they brought her back real fast and said, you know what? We messed up. We had a check to get. And so we're going to go ahead and give you what this, uh, give you this Oscar because it really ain't worth nothing. It ain't worth nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that makes it valuable is if somebody gives you an Oscar that Eddie Murphy had and then it becomes a collector's piece. Other than that, it ain't worth nothing. She can't go pawn it. She can't sell it. She can't do nothing. It's only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it if she puts it on eBay. And I heard they buying a lot of those dirty panties more than what they buying all uh, these Oscars around here. So, you know, for her to... To take a slap in the face like that and, and take an honorary award. Jasmine, do you have the, 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 do we have her getting that award? Where is it? Woman, I thought long and hard about what I'd say this evening. This for me is not just another award. It's a testament to my legacy. This trophy represents my contributions to this medium of film. All that I've given of my mind, body, and spirit as an actress who is a black woman. So, do I go the route of saying a few words of gratitude for what this moment means to me? Or do I give voice to what I hope this moment should mean for generations of black actresses to come? As I look to the future, I think that it would be of service to face that which we all must contend mm -hmm. as we look toward tomorrow and beyond. So, if you will open your hearts and minds, I'll just share my personal reflection. Pa and we're it. days we away. Ain't got time for that. We ain't got time for it. She's reading a monologue again, like she's auditioning for a role. I don't have time. That ain't how she talk in real life, and I know that, okay? Um, and so congratulations, but that is your Get the Out of Here Award. That is the shut the fuck up award. We don't want no more boycotting. We don't want no more black actresses not showing up. We don't want NAACP on our ass saying we ain't meeting quota, giving out two or three awards to brown and black people. So just shut up, get your award, and go home. But before she went home, she did this here. Which, um... Now, all I'm going to say, Angela... Now I, I get what you 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 meant by doing this after they gave you your participation award, your honorary award. And I know there are plenty of black uh um prolific people that have gotten this award before. It's the same award. Shut the fuck up, take your award and go. You ain't paying for it, therefore you really don't deserve it. But we're gonna give it to you because we don't want you making a fuss. We don't want you outside picketing. But for her to grab this lady by the face. Like Trump grabbing white women by the. Angela. What's wrong? Oh my God. Angela. You know, if that was, if a man had done that, because you didn't ask her, you just, grabbed her face and kissed her. And the climate that we're in, even though I know you didn't mean nothing by that, Angela, and I'm not putting no allegations on you, 
But what I'm saying is in a climate like this, if it was a man, if it was Denzel, and he ended up grabbing a white girl that gave him the damn honorary award, Lord knows that would have been a lawsuit right now. Now, it don't matter if it's gender, the same gender on gender. You didn't ask that lady's permission, and so therefore we all need to we all need to just ride real high right now, real below, just high, minding our business, heads high, because um, I just don't understand why you even did that. And she looked like she didn't even want it. She was, you see, her eyes was closed. Why we always got to mess up a perfectly good moment? You know, there's a lot of things that this represents, even though I don't want to go there and I know you're not you know, representing LGBTQ. I know none of that is going on. I know there's no agenda here, but this could say a lot. Mm -hmm. We already got the emasculation of black men wearing dresses in Hollywood. And now when you get an honorary award, you turn around and kiss your sister just to promote the emasculation of plenty of black men and, you know, the uh, uh, the genocide, alleged genocide on the racist, you know, by promoting... I just want y'all to have babies with each other. That's all I want. I just want y'all to have babies with each other. I don't care who you're messing with. Just please have babies. Because if not, we're going to be gone. We're going to be gone. Dead and gone. Mm -hmm. But anyways, congratulations. You deserve it. Speaking of congratulations. Now, I'm a little irritated by this here, okay? Now, I don't know what's going on. I've been calling a few people. And, you know, this side, there's, there's two sides of media. There's this side, and then there's my side. Okay? And my side, we're more open. You know, we ain't got to look over our shoulder. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter if lawsuits get filed. Ain't nobody getting hurt. Nobody getting taken advantage of or drugged or coochies getting taken. None of that. You know what I'm saying? No police record of anything, uh, no stealing money, none of that. We get we get lawsuits because we won't be quiet. That's it. Y'all get lawsuits because you're taking people, you're taking things from people. She taking husbands, envy taking money, and they say Charlemagne taking coochie. That's in that's in the federal court. And they say Tasha just won't shut up in the court. That's it. I just so there's two sides of media. I was doing like this. That's how that wine kicking. There's two sides of media. Which side are you on? I'm on this side. I'm on the light side. I'm on the ain't nothing being held in the dark. Ain't no secrets. Ain't no NDAs over here. Ain't no oh, I'm so you so you be quiet. Ain't none of that going on over here. We ain't got nothing to worry about. You, what you want to know? I'm going to tell it all. And you ain't going to have to pay for it. I ain't going to scheme you into taking no money from no black people. And then I preach mental health. And the one person's mental health you need to see by, and you calling yourself a God, you, you dragging her mental health through court right now. After she already got you on paperwork in South Carolina. Don't play with me. Play with me today. But I'm the bad guy. And I'll continue being the bad guy because there's a new definition for a bad guy. I just want to shut up. That's it. I just want to shut up. Anyway, anyway, I would rather I would rather be in court for not shutting up than taking money, taking coochie, taking somebody's husband. Okay. Now, uh, she came out and said, "Do you have the video, Jasper? You ain't got it." Well, she announced. I know. I just okay. Oh, you <laughs> You can't hear what you're saying. I couldn't hear that. I couldn't hear it. It's okay. We didn't need to hear it anyway because apparently uh, she was announcing that she was the new host on The Breakfast Club, which, I mean, that's that's a pretty big deal. That pays $260,000. Um, they, they were, uh, looking to file, you know, uh, uh, fill that position ever since Angela Yee has left. I kind of miss her. I do. I miss her old light skin, plain face self. Yes, I do. 
Um, it's just a balance there. You know, when you X yourself from an equation, um, you'll truly get to magnify on what's going on. So it's like, if you quiet, you'll see what the truth is. You'll see what the truth is. And now we see it. And so she's been guest hosting the most on the breakfast club since Angela Yee has left. I think she's done an okay job. Um, I had some reservations with her interview with, um, you, she seems a little scared to ask questions when certain celebrities come in the building, like she stutters. I don't know if she can read that well. I don't know. I, I think there's some illiteracy issues going on. And then, you know, when she let Sexy Red check her like that, I was like, girl, you you don't let nobody come in your show and, and check you. This is your show. But she was scared because she don't know what side. She's trying to be politically correct. And then, you know, she goes into, you know, the comedy, um, you know, the comedy club and she's incorrect. Okay. And so, uh, you know, they came out and, and said that, I guess the announcement, apparently they don't know where it came from. Where, where, where's, where's, you know Andy? what I'm so confused by, but you, we spent all last year, mm -hmm. um, rotating guest co-hosts mm -hmm. and I thought we was rotating guest co-hosts mm -hmm. before we let God decide who was supposed to be in here. Mm -hmm. Now it's 2024. What happened? Did we just say F it? There's not going to be an, another co-host? Well, well at first, I can't take talking to you. I can't take talking to you either. At first, it was going to be a couple of months, right? No, it never was going to be a couple of months. That was y'all idea. I always said a year. I thought it was going to be a couple of months. That's I why we do don't like you for you to I think. Did, I, didn't, I <laughs> you told you this already. I didn't want to do this like for a year. I didn't want to do this. I don't want to just talk I, to you I, for a year. I knew for a year. I was like, yeah, I said it's going to take at least a year. Because, you, you know, Angelie is what I always say. She's irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like. The person that's coming here in here is not replacing anyone. If there's somebody coming in here, that's my whole point of having this conversation. What the hell happened? You know everything. You tell me. This one, I'm confused. <laughs> now, now you confused? I don't know what the hell is happening. If anything is happening at all. Yeah, I can't. I can't do this too much longer. Just me and you. This is starting I don't to feel know what the hell's going on, man. And you start looking in my eye. It just makes me feel nervous and uncomfortable. I'm not doing that with you this year. I'm not. I, 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 You're not doing it's that. It's been three days and we haven't flirted one time, and I'm fine with it. Yo. I, I'm yo. fine with it. <laughs> yo. I'm fine with it. Yo, yo. It's been three yo. days and I'm fine Sim, with it. Sim, Sim. Just don't look at me. Sim. Get your mask. No, no, get your mask. <laughs> get your mask. Get your mask. It's been three whole days. Oh, God. I just want to know what's going on, man, if anything, because it don't feel like nothing. <laughs> it don't feel like nothing. You want it, it to no feel motion. like something. It ain't no motion. What's happening? What's happening? That's all. All right. No. I just don't know what the hell's going on. I'm not even. I'm not even joking with y'all. I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't. All right. Well, that is your rumor. Have report. we said effort? Are we just gonna say effort? No, more? I'm not. I'm. I'm not doing the, the rumors a whole year. It's not gonna happen. I'm tired. I don't. Oh. I don't. I don't, don't want to get in people's lives and get their relationship and talk about. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't do want to rotate guest co-hosts no more though. For two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Would I let them humiliate me and play with me like that after I've showed up consistently to make time to only be paid a thousand dollars per show? For them to still play with me and my name and let social media drag me like that and, and have all types of assumptions. Now, I don't know if this is clout chasing. But you would, I would think somebody like the Breakfast Club wouldn't need the clout chase. But you know, they using my name a lot in headlines. So much so, they listening to me saying, why are y'all using my name? They just calling me the blogger lady again. But everybody know my name. Sorry. And um, I just, I don't know if this is like, like, why does it need to take all of this? She's been there consistently. She's done the best that she can. She's read the best that she could. You know, she's trying to get comfortable. Why does it take all of that just to fill that seat? It belongs to her anyway, because she's been there. But knowing them, they probably want somebody light skinned. Because envy like to take from black people, allegedly. And, and, and Charlemagne likes to take from dark skinned black women, allegedly. So they just don't want nobody in there that's been accused, or maybe it's their wives, of taking people's husbands. I don't know. I don't know. But nevertheless, let's just give it a job.
Just, just stop. Just give it a job. It's two hundred sixty thousand. Just give it a job. The girl tired of going to Detroit every weekend to get ten thousand dollars show. She is ready to let her. Moving on. Maybe I'll give her a YouTube class. Show her how it works. <sighs> All right. After the break, okay. Remember, we got three shows, okay. So we got this show. We got TJ and Amy Robot coming up. Kim and Croy. Dr. Heavenly coming for Cat Williams. Peter Thomas was arrested. Uh, he did speak out on it. Definitely going to be talking about the B the BBL models is coming for the natural girls again. And then uh, uh, Fulton County District Attorney uh, Fannie Willis has been getting. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, I just don't understand how you screwing and paying the people that are screwing you. That's you. How's Fanny be, being a, we'll talk about that a little later. And then we got a, a twin Hector, Black China's ex versus Tokyo Tony. I told Tokyo Tony, I'll call her here in just a little bit. So we'll discuss some things before we head over to Tasha K Live for the second part of the show. And we will be releasing the interview with Hector as well. Okay, so you got two shows on TashaKLive.com. So if you want to see those, make sure you subscribe to TashaKLive.com to get both of those. But in the meantime, we got a little sponsor, which is myself, that we need to brag about, which means Bowley Razor Glass 2. Stay right there. We'll be right back after the break. Let's go. Have the fucking Memphis. Yes, yes. In, in the, the wine zone. Memphis hits, baby. H I T Z. All the way in South Florida. Yes. And just like I was telling you, you don't do no That's interviews. Like I usually don't do interviews. And I, I kind of stay out the way. Short. Yeah, yeah. I stay out the way. I'm like, you know, I don't. I I've never been in the one that want to be bickering with my with my exes and stuff like that. But people let be telling me like, yo, it's Memphis. Necessary. I think you're the only man that's famous yeah. for your exes. That's crazy. I'm supposed, yeah. to be, I'm supposed to be famous for some other stuff. No, you're famous because of who you dated. That's crazy. I'm supposed to be famous because I discovered T Pain. I'm supposed to be famous because, oh well, I, I, <laughs> Go signed, ahead. I signed some artists. What that, artists? Uh, K Michelle. Uh, okay. J Quan. Okay. Everybody Club Get Tipsy. Yeah. Huey, Pop Lock and Drop It, my, my label, Hits Committee. My show on BT, The Deal, when okay. I used to be a, a host of VJ. Okay. And, and I'm doing all this stuff, and this is what people be You're asking only me about. You're famous for it. When I Google your name, you know what comes up? Yo, I, K. I, Michelle, I, and but they did put alleged. They put alleged beater. That's crazy. The music, they'll say K. Michelle accused her former boyfriend and music executive Memphis of domestic abuse, okay? Did she fall in love with you? Yes, she's still in love with me. When we was in court, when I was doing the lawsuit, she was still looking like you wanna. She was still acting like she wanted to go do something. I was like, oh, but girl, you crazy. You, you ruined my whole life. You crazy? I would never touch you. And that's when, and that's when, that's when shit really got ugly. I ain't gonna, you know, just. I mean, I just like I can't take it no more. I'm done. When I said I'm done, and I was, and we was, we was in the hotel. I said I'm done. And I got about. I got, I got real close to that door because uh -huh. I was out of the door. But my head, that that much, if that my head that was that close from getting hit by that urn, I called the police. So how long were you guys together? Maybe what? She be making it like it was years. We probably was the other like five, six months before I just said I can't do this no more. Man, that was a three-hour funny ass interview. Please make sure y'all take the time to watch it. He explains what happened. Uh, between him and Toya and the breakdown of their marriage, Toy Wright, Lil Wayne's ex, as well as what happened uh, from his perspective uh, between him and K. Michelle, okay? Mm -hmm. And the other 900 plus women that he claims that he's been with. It was a lot going on in that interview, okay? All right, so let's go on and get started. Who's next? Who's next? Make sure y'all liking this video, sharing this video. All right, we're back to our regular schedule, okay? So make sure you tell a friend. Tell a wino. We're going to start giving referral fees for winos. Yeah, I'm going to work on that, okay? All right, so TJ and Amy. Mm. This is sad. This is really sad. This is what I call, um, it's like immediate karma. It's like direct karma. So you know these two were both fired for being married, sleeping with each other, while they were working and, you know, causing another, uh, just unnecessary controversy surrounding the workplace as well as in their homes, okay? Their kids have watched each other, their spouses were friends. It was just all the way messy. And when they got fired, 
they decided to bond together and say that they were going to go and get their own show. Okay. Not only that, uh, apparently their spouses are now dating each other because they ain't want to start over. They say, hell, we, we know each other now. Might as well. You know, we're both hurting together. Just like they, they alleged, you know, hurting together. It's, it's just, it's a lot. And to hear them um, shopping a show and then the show doesn't get picked up because nobody's interested in, in watching them talk about how great their sex was last night. Nobody, nobody's interested in, in watching that. They want news. They want entertainment. And they definitely don't want no nasty breakups, okay? And they don't want, you know, divorce filings, emotions, hitting, you know, the tabloids every minute while, you know, they're trying to build ratings for a show. Because it can really turn off a lot of people, especially when you you know, appeal to, to families and, 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 and things like that. Okay. So it just left a bad taste in people's mouths. Okay. Um, and so, you know, to hear them now join YouTube and, 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 and iTunes and start a podcast and then for them to kind of let us in on what was really going on, um, after they claimed that they were happy and, you know, they wanted to leave their spouses to be together. Um, it's just interesting to hear them to say what, you know, they were saying in this audio here that we got from their podcast. Let's go. You add it up, December. Oh my goodness. How much this is money? So embarrassing. <laughs> we spent oh on my alcohol for the month. And we were able to do this by going back and looking at receipts from our account, also looking at Drizzly. Yeah, um, we love Drizzly. How much we order that? It's an Everybody, absurd number. It, well, okay. We spent in the month of December $2,869 on alcohol. <laughs> Oh alone God. period so, oh my god i'm so embarrassed I, I mean i don't know what i thought the number would be higher oh to be honest with you god. but that is an amount of money now that is going to be saved in january this past year a lot of people experienced the pandemic and excessive amounts of drinking because a you were bored you didn't have anywhere to go you had nothing to do you had no one to see and work was from home I didn't experience that. I was at work every day. I was working more than I have actually in recent years. So last year was my pandemic. I didn't have a job to go to. I was staying away from a lot of friends and family. We were laying low. And so what did I do? I drank a lot, a lot more than I ever have. I don't think I've ever gone a full year where I drank every single day. And that was 2023 for me. And it wasn't that I was getting wasted or drunk or any of that. It was just keeping a buzz going all day or at least keeping a relaxed state of mind in a heightened anxious year mm -hmm. and so i'm appalled when i look back at how much i actually drank people want to try to initially fudge the numbers and then once yeah. you start talking a little more about it and getting a little more open and honest about it you find some realities about your alcohol use that maybe you need to re-examine your relationship with i think you are somebody who would admit that I am certainly somebody who right now and in years past need to re-examine my relationship with alcohol. And that's what we are doing. And I hope a lot of you all are doing right now as well. But we part of this and us talking to you is we have to be honest. I think it's pretty honest to say before last year, I think 15 to 20 is probably a more honest answer of what I drank per week. Per week. Um, yeah, two drinks a day average, but sometimes I'd have three or four. This year, I would say it was at least three drinks a day and oftentimes more. So it could be four, it could be five. And so I was saying I'm at least above 21 plus drinks per week, but you made a good point. So yes, if I'm having a glass of rosé or um, a beer, that's measurable. Actually, probably not even because my pores are heavy. Five ounces is actually yes. what it is for wine and ain't no way I pour myself a five ounce glass of wine. So. I mean, you might even double what I just said, mm -hmm. given the fact that I make probably more of a nine ounce pour, which mm -hmm. is what you are typically used to seeing. But you and I, the, the drinks I drink are beer, wine, and margaritas. Oh, mm -hmm. April spritzes too. I yep. love April spritz. This is what they were pitching to the networks. They were a couple, controversial but drinking so much together that they didn't even think, I mean, for her to have to say, well, five ounces is not a lot. Maybe if I do six and then six times five is 30 and 30 drinks per week. Cause they literally admitted to TJ Holmes having 18 drinks per day 
amid unemployment and a fair drama and her admitting to 30 drinks per week and the fact that they had a whole five minute conversation about the ounces and the amount of drinks that they were having and they thought that they were having that they had a drinking problem and it stems from just them not having self-control it ain't got shit to do with all the people that they fucked over including them including themselves and their motherfucking money it ain't got nothing to do with that it's got everything to do with the alcohol and maybe we should just cut back like an ounce and i know i know in that room i mean 18 drinks per day i know his semen smell very you probably could have used his semen to uh to heal a wound i know when he came in there he was burning her not std wise but i'm just saying alcohol just imagine alcohol in your vagina because if he's drinking that much that's his output and i know her vaginal secretions was smelling like sauvignon blanc probably tasted like that too i know it was i know the whole room was smelling pissy and that, that, that much alcohol ain't nobody cleaning washing those sheets brushing their teeth and you trying to pitch this to networks no <laughs> absolutely not mm -mm. Mm. but this this is what you call like karma and blind really leading the blind because neither one of them can see how fucked up they really are they can't even tell each other that they drinking too much oh well 18 is not as bad as 30 but as long as you don't have 31 and just keep it at five ounces each time it, and make sure you drink two bottles of water. It's really not that much. And given our age, our kidneys have about 10 more years before we're on Warren Buffett's dialysis machines. And so, you know, let's just try to preserve it just enough. Just like Kim and Croy. They starting to get me Bobby and Whitney, the white version. They really are. The more I think about this, the, the ongoing foreclosures, you know, her calling the police on them, them owing millions in taxes, ain't paying their mortgage, lying about being pregnant, all types of stuff to gain clout. She even put herself back out on the market to look for Big Papa to come in and pick up the bills that Croy couldn't pay because I guarantee you they either drinking up the money, smoking up the money, because they damn sure fucking up the money. It, there's no doubt about that. And the more I keep reading headlines about them, it's like they get back together, they go to church. She goes to church in a body con dress from Fashion Nova. Soon as she gets out of church, she goes and sells her shit, her purses, her shoes. It's giving me, I'm telling you, it's giving me, they, somebody smoking that shit in the house. I, I don't think that this is just a money problem. They fighting. Throwing each other out of the room. The police is coming. Nobody's going to jail because both of them are really kind of taking up for each other. She getting pulled over by the police and stuff. Selling everything out that house. I'm telling you, it's giving me Bobby and Whitney all day. They on that shit. Who's the dealer? Who's the dealer? I know they're going to reach out to me. I'm telling you, everybody reach out to me. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Listen, you can't make this up. Just like Amy and, and TJ. You know, the Chinese men are happy because I'm not, I'm telling you all their money just going to alcohol. You no, no. I refuse to believe that this is just a money problem. I know being raised in the hood as long as I've been in the hood with crackheads sound like and what they move like. Now, maybe it's not the type of crack we used to. Maybe it's Percocets. So, Somers. What's the other one? Start with an L. I forgot. Out of Xanax. Please, please list in the in the chat what this is. Because ain't no way they got this. I mean, they say they're coming to take the house. The bank said, you know what? You done got it off the auction block. He done borrowed the money from his parents. I'm trying to tell you. Somebody, somebody on that shit. That's, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. It's going to come. There's a doctor that's in their pocket right now. Right now. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah moving on we shall continue hope y'all enjoying the show okay make sure you're ready for part two of the show we got a lot of wine we're gonna spill on tashkalive.com 
All right, who next? Who the BBL girls are coming? They come in. Go ahead and put up the post. Now, her name is Esther Falana. Now, I guess she African because I'd be on the African blogs too. Shout out to the African blogs. Now, it's a lot of wine that, that go down over there. You know, they ain't even supposed to be drinking over there. Now, a, according to her, she, she claims that um, as a female in 2024, if you don't have a BBL, boobs, or teeth, you're not a baddie. Now, this, this post stuck out to me. It really did. It had about 6,000 comments under it. I said, imagine somebody telling you that in 2024, if you don't have a BBL, boobs, or teeth, you're not a baddie. Now, imagine somebody telling you that that was ugly before they got the surgery and ugly after they got the surgery, because that's a BBL face she got. Put her back up on the screen. That's a BBL face. See how faces why? Young Miami, Ari, they all got the same faces. This is what she felt like. She said, if you don't have these things, you're ugly. Because she's still ugly, and she know what ugly is. I just, you can't make this up. Moving on, you know, hey, natural girls versus surgery girls. Hey, these are y'all girls. Moving on. <sighs> Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Heavenly. I just, I don't, I don't understand who asked you. Go ahead and roll the video, Jasmine. Who asked her? Who asked her? Controversy. You controversy. know what I mean? There ain't no telling what's true what ain't in the world. Like I say, 20% of people like you, 20% don't like you, and the rest don't care, you know? But they say he got 35 million views on that interview, you know? So... Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a way, that's a free promotion. Y'all saying he did it for free, but if you got 35 million people watching, then people responding. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to promote something and you ain't got no money to promote it, oh, YouTube the way. That's how we promote Mary the Medicine. Mm -hmm. I feel stupid arguing with a little girl, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But she the only one playing. The rest mm -hmm. of them ain't working, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With any platform, you can actually use that platform for the greater good. So you use the bad to get to the good. That's the only thing I can think to do, you know? Um, you could say, hey, it could be all positive, but you ain't going to get the traction. I mean, and if you do, it's going to take you a hell of a long time. So I don't know. Y'all tell me what's the answer. If you want to be um, popular and, and promote yourself, your show, your business, your comedy tour, what's a better way to promote it? Imagine a, a, a so-called doctor and, and being a black doctor, being a black female doctor is a prestigious, like that's a prestigious position. And you've had to succumb to going on reality TV just to sell teeth. Like you, you've literally set up and fixed your squeaky Alvin and the chipmunk mouth to speak on somebody that's been going from comedy club to comedy club that hasn't used one ounce of social media controversy to sell any, any of his tours, his tickets on his tours. And I've been to several of Cat Williams shows and they all have sold out without any mainstream promotion or YouTube promotion. And you mad because you got to get online and fuss with people and, and bully women and attack their marriages all just to give out free teeth to people who don't go to the dentist anyway. See y'all play y'all y'all see. I'm trying to be nice here because you know, You've been using social media personalities to to fund your business and accusing people of husbands of sleeping with other women. And then when they accuse your husband of, of sleeping with everybody else but you, because we don't see him sleep with you because you be on live too much with a bonnet on yelling about everybody else's marriage but your own. Um, you want to try to break down numbers because it hasn't equated to you turning that into anything else. Because if I was truly a dentist, 
Because my dentist is busy, real busy. They ain't got time for TV or nothing like that. So I don't understand. Now, you can say you got people working for you and stuff like that, but you're still using, like I said, people who ain't never been to the dentist in their life, who just go to the health department and get teeth pulled to replace teeth just to market your business and still ain't selling no teeth. So you out here yelling at other black women? Cat no marketing. And he didn't need to do now interview to sell our now tour because he ain't never did now before. Meanwhile, you've been on the internet for years and still got a bag for people to go to your beauty supply store. Well, I'm moving on. Moving on. I just, you can't make this shit up. You can't make this up. I need the mug shot, Jasmine. There we go. Now he claims, uh, now apparently according uh, to reports, okay, Peter was pulled over and uh, taken, to, taken to jail. He bonded out. Let me make sure I get it. I'm going to make sure I get the charges. Give me one second here. All right. So what are the charges? Still ain't got charged for not paying them employees and stuff like that. Okay. Arrested for driving under the influence, having no license. Having no insurance and inspired tagging more. So he just don't believe in paying for anything. The man got his green card and he still ain't paying taxes or nothing. No employees. Damn sure ain't paying the state of Florida nothing. Okay. He just believe in existing. Taking people money and existing. Now they say that he was uh, arrested. Let me see. I believe Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. Now he bonded out on 3K. Came back, okay, and it was told also not to consume alcohol, smoke weed, or own any firearms. He will also have to take random drug tests. Now, he came and said, Jasmine, you got that video of him responding. If not, it's okay. But he he came out and said that he just refused the blow. And that's the reason why he got the DUI and he was in the hospital for his blood pressure. But this is the mug shot here. Allegedly, and as you can see, looking at exhibit A here, we know high eyes when we see them. We know when somebody is fucked up. And the blood pressure, oh, high blood pressure. And he made the video, said he had got out, went to the hospital, and he was only in the hospital for high blood pressure, but made the video responding to this <clears throat> on an airplane. Now, see, I was told by my doctor when the blood pressure high, you, you ain't supposed to be in the air for a little while until the blood pressure, you know, comes down. So I didn't know we can, you know, get arrested, go to jail, refuse the blow, go to the hospital, complain of high blood pressure after you've been allegedly drinking. And I don't know high blood pressure to make them eyes that red. Only reefer do that. Reefer. Alcohol. And he ain't even got an alcohol license. Now, I know it had to be something, too, because I'm from Florida. Let me tell you something. This is how I know they had him, because I'm from Florida. And I have been arrested several times in Florida back in my early 20s for driving with no license, no registration, uh, no insurance. And they don't take you to jail. They write you tickets, and they send them to the credit bureau. That's why I'm down here in Florida now. The laws are much softer. But for him to go to jail, it had to be something. So either... It was a DUI or he's trying to say it was high blood pressure. And that's his story. He's sticking to it. But mind you, he made the response video on a Delta airline. Something that is known to cause your blood pressure to go through the roof, heart problems, and to constrict the blood vessels even more. Moving on. Let me see what y'all talking about in the comments. Let me see. I think I can see y'all comments from here. Y'all better be liking this video. Seriously. Now, now, Tasha, now you go to jail. You go to jail now? Well, I don't know. I don't drive no more, so. <laughs> I don't drive no more. A lot has changed. I don't drive no more, okay? Let me see. All righty. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Okay. All right. This is funny. I knew it was only a matter of time that they were going to come for Miss Fanny Willis. Miss Fanny fucking Willis. And the only reason I'm calling her fucking Willis is because she 
I don't understand how you the trick in this. Like, how did you become, how are you the district attorney of Fulton County? You bring in some pretty big cases. And now they potentially may have a misconduct case against you. All over some light bill dick. Remember, Tyler Perry said black women need to pay the light bill. Apparently that's what she was doing with the prosecutor, Nathan Wade. Now she done indicted 17 white men. And out of these 17 white men, all of them banded together to find any type of, of uh, what do you, what is the word that I'm looking for? Um, conflict of interest that they can find to get out of those charges. They're not interested in beating racketeering charges. Trump is not interested in beating racketeering charges. What he's interested in doing is charging and getting you charged and fired. And he found it. All 17 other people that you decided to indict is chestnut checkers. You ain't do no homework on who was potentially going to come for you, your job, and any other jobs that you got lined up. Now, apparently, Miss Fanny fucking Willis here in the dress, that's the same one that, uh, 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 you know, brought charges against uh, Young Thug, okay? is the boss she's a district attorney and while he nathan the prosecutor in the blue suit was married to his wife what is the wife named jocelyn wade he's going through a divorce with jocelyn then left jocelyn his wife of 26 years with allegedly no money this is what trump's team dug up this is what they do this is what they being charged for right now in georgia tampering altering things, racketeering, they a gang, they a gang. So apparently they found out that Miss Fanny fucking Willis was not only tricking, but she was tricking on the prosecutor that she assigned to take down Trump. Not only that, the money and the contracts that she's allocating, allegedly, to Nathaniel or Nathan Wade, he's supposed to be putting money in his wife's account, giving spousal support. But instead, he's only depositing $700 every two weeks to a woman he's been married to for 26 years. And they found this out in divorce motions because he had the divorce sealed. The Trump team had it unsealed and found out that even Fanny was subpoenaed in his divorce case to testify so that the wife can get information on where her money at? How is it that she been around for 26 years? She prettier than the prosecutor. Way in shape. Takes care of her skin and her teeth. And how is it that she's only giving, getting $700 every two weeks and he is allegedly taking $700 of that money back to use that after he's getting contracts from Fanny, and all he got to do is allegedly fuck Fanny. Said that her office allocated $650,000 to a man that she fucking and tricking on. Now, I said, how you the boss and you paying for dick, not only that married dick, and you know he ain't buy shit because he ain't even taking care of his wife of 26 years that's been a housewife, that's raised their kids, and you okay with that, and you didn't think these crackers was going to find that out? You didn't think that? Oh, it's messy. They ain't that the Trump and them ain't worried about no charges in Georgia. They worried about changing the narrative. Who 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 are we gonna charge for misconduct and racketeering and misappropriating the funds and shit like that and buying dick? Fanny fucking Willis. Absolutely. Stay tuned. We'll be watching. Moving on. All right, all right, all right. Now, before we head over to TashaKLive.com, let me break down something. So yesterday on social media, Miss Tokyo Tony was uh, apparently exposed by her daughter's ex-boyfriend, Twin Hector. Now, I don't know if y'all remember Twin Hector. Twin Hector was with Black China in 2020 and was exposed by a man named Queasy for apparently being bisexual. 
Now, every man that was linked to Black China over the years has been accused of being bisexual. So it was kind of branded that she didn't mind if the men were bisexual. You know, we we spoken to Michi and things like that. I think Rob is the only one that ain't caught no, no strays yet, you know. And so yesterday he decided, twin, uh, her boyfriend, her ex-boyfriend of three years, they live together, according to him, uh, uploaded a music video taking shots at Tokyo Tony and Black China. Not only that, he uploaded some compromising DMs and the messages that allegedly came from Tokyo Tony. Now, some of the messages are questionable because it looks like the messages or the screenshots came from a live stream where she was actually kind of, I get, you know, she appeared to be nude on the live stream. And, uh, but there was one video that he had received of her. Uh, and it looks like Tokyo Tony, Black China's mom was masturbating. Now, I don't know if she was masturbating. I didn't watch the video, but it seems that way. And apparently that she was going to come, you know, and beat her daughter ass and apparently leave some pussy for twin Hector official, her boyfriend, on the way out the door. Okay? Now, this is between them. Now, all them were one happy, unhappy family. Uh, I hit twin yesterday and because uh, I'm in L.A. And he decided to come down and, and do an interview to, you know, to clear up everything. Not only that, he, he spoke about the dynamics of the relationship between him and China, China and his mom. You Y'all will not believe what he had to say about China and his mama and what the mama did. OK. Oh, yeah. Here's some of the messages. I think Jasmine put that up. Uh, apparently the messages say, tell my daughter I booked a plane ticket and come into her house to beat the shit out of her. This is how she does me after all I did for her. And I've had enough and it's time for her to get that ass in check. And then he goes and says, hey, how you doing, Miss Tony? I ain't got no bad blood for you uh, with you. Your daughter have no bad blood with you. That girl loves you so much only has the greatest intentions and plans when it comes to you. Maybe it's the lack of communication. Y'all, I, I can't read all that. I can't read all that, okay? I ain't even got my glasses. I'm struggling and everything. But you you see you see what it says, okay? Now, we spent about uh, an hour and some change with Twin. And, um, you know, I asked him every question that I, I, I had. And he gave us, you know, his side of the story and how the messages came and what was the breakdown between him and China. And it's it's a lot of stuff, y'all. All alleged, of course, I wasn't there. But I do want to go ahead and take this opportunity before we head over to TashaKLive.com and watch that interview, okay? And we head over and uh, we start the second part of the show at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure that you have your subscriptions, TashaKLive.com, and you subscribe via the website to get it. Tony has since hit my phone. I don't know how she got my number. I really don't. Somebody is out here giving out my number, and I'm going to find out who it is. I really am. I just don't understand. This is the fifth number that I've changed because I changed it when WAC 100 posted my number. Yeah. And so I've, I haven't even had this number that long. And now all of a sudden, Tokyo Tony has my number. And I have an assistant that takes all my calls. Okay. Now, apparently Tony says that this is not true. She says that the messages are fake. Uh, she says that the account was created, um, I guess, the day that he released the music video. This is her side. And she sent me a Black China confidentiality agreement that Hector signed. Okay, now it's long. It's right here. And she's basically saying that he's about to get sued because he shouldn't be doing any interviews on Black China. And um, he has an NDA. And if I air the interview, which is lies, this is what's going to happen. But it's going to happen anyway because he's already done this, okay? So she says, don't get involved in this lawsuit. I'm not involved in the lawsuit, okay? And you can, that's up to you. If you hear anything, he say, I promise you will get sued. This is Tokyo Tony. You have been notified through your Instagram with the NDA signed by all better known as Hector. Again, cease and quit or else lies, not my page. And I said, I'll call you shortly. So give me one second, okay? Let me see if Tony want to talk. Mute the, mute the uh, uh, volume real quick. You're 
I'm here. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just gonna see if she wanna talk. She don't wanna talk. Then y'all can just go on and watch the interview. So we've given out her side. She says she innocent. She says she didn't do it. Fucking Memphis. Okay, we back. Yes, okay. All right, we back. We back. I don't know what the issue is. Sometimes my laptop just shuts down, but we back. Okay, so apparently she doesn't want to address this right now. I'll talk to her a little later, you know, but I like to talk on the record. So, you know, especially with her texting me like that and things like that. And you've already been talking to other publications, so I don't understand why I got the seats and everybody else ain't cease it when they posted this. Okay, so I don't get that. We have my attorneys figure that out. All right. Now, mm. we're going to head over right now to TashaKLive.com and watch this interview. What time is it? What time is it? 5.14. Okay, perfect. We're going to start the second part of the show at 5.30. We got Xavier Howard. Central time. No, it's not central time. It's Pacific Standard Time. Will you let me host my show? Damn. He want to host the show. I'm not sitting there talking. He talking in my ear. Anyway, 5.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time as well as, uh, let me see. Yeah, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I believe it's 8.30 p.m., if I'm not mistaken, your time, okay? Nevertheless, have your subscriptions on. We're going to head on over. You know we get a little dangerous over there. A lot of stuff that we can't put out, and we got to edit. And that's why it's edited before it comes out on TashKLive.com. Okay, because there's a lot of things that I can't say or do. All right, but we're going to hear to advertiser uh, guidelines and things like that. Thank y'all so much for watching. I really appreciate it, okay? If you like this video, definitely subscribe, okay? Don't forget to share. If you have tips on your favorite celebrities, please feel free to hit me via Unwind with Tasha K on Instagram or send me an email via Unwind with Tasha K at gmail.com. If you want to advertise on the platform, please feel free to hit us at ads at TashaKLive.com. We're about to gear up and start promoting ads again. We took a break. We was on, you know, break and stuff like that. And so we're back now working. And uh, yeah, I love y'all. And I can't wait to get home. Oh my God, I can't wait to get home. But I'll see y'all on the app. We're about to head over to the website right now, TashaKLive.com. Now I got to go. Bye.